Hello and welcome to Rides from the Past. During the 1980s and 1990s, the UK funfair scene was inundated with novelty rides. This series is a basic look back at some of the more unusual rides the UK has seen. If you're new to the series, we are now on episode 4. If you missed the first three episodes, the Roller, the Tsunami and the Xenon, they are still available on this channel. I recommend you subscribe to Fairpix videos for future uploads. Now let's get on with episode 4, which was originally due to the episode 3, as this was becoming quite an enjoyable exercise, and rather than rushing it to a finish, I chose to take a break and bring the shorter episode forward. The topic is about one machine originating from the American Carnival Midway circuit, which became a hit at the UK's biggest fairs and a beacon of light at night. Having sold his Hayes Fabrications big wheel to John Holy, Showman William Summers imported the Chance Ride Skydiver from Milton, Indiana, USA in 1987. At 70 foot or 21 meters high, this novelty update to the Ferris wheel became a natural landmark for fun fairs for the rest of the 20th century, appearing far afield as from parts of Scotland to Jersey. Before we explore the machine's UK career, let's explore about this generic type of machine. The Skydiver is an amusement ride produced from 1965 to 1987 by Charles Rides and a American manufacturer based in Wichita, Kansas. Skydiver cars are mounted on a circular frame like a ferris wheel that spin on the front back axis similar to a barrel roll. The ride requires two trailers to transport from place to place. The ride experience is quite surreal. There is a user control steering wheel inside each car, allowing riders the option to perform crazy barrel rolls. If you leave it alone, you are likely to lop side over. This ride is for the hardcore riding generation, not for theme park fanboys. <laughs> As I didn't see this machine in the flesh until Newcastle Hoppings 1995, I have to rely on resources from the net and my collection for its early history. As I mentioned in the previous video, the digital collection of the National Fairground and Circus Archive, based at Sheffield University, is a great resource for early photos. I'm using screenshots in this video to acknowledge their amazing work. A link to their site is in the description. The first major fair for the Skydiver was at Newcastle Town Mall Hoppings 1987, standing on William's old big wheel position towards the top end of the main row. Paul Angel documents its eagerly awaited appearance. This became an established regular at the Hoppings, and also attended Nottingham and Hull on a regular basis. From 1988, Paul Angel captured the main diver load behind the ERF truck which William travelled the machine with. This screenshot shows the photos Ron Kinder took off its build up at Nottingham. I recommend you to visit the archive for zoomed up images. Finally Paul returned to the Goose Fair and captured this dust photo of the machine lighting up the sky. It was often found alongside Holland's paratrooper at the fair facing Noyce's gallopers. The wheel became an established regular at Loughborough Pleasure Fair in mid-November, often found standing in Ashby Square at the end of Market Street. In February 1989, it appeared at Kings Lynn Mark, positioned on a side position, of which I found from my archive copies of the World's Fair. Then in April, an appearance at Kirkcaldy Lynx Market on John Cadona's position, as posted on Facebook recently by Brian McKinley. 
In October, following a return to Hull, the machine was found at Ilkeston Charter Fair, positioned in Queen Street on a floating position. Afterwards, it formed a very strong lineup of aerial thrill machines at Keith Emmett's Fireworks Fair in Milton Keynes, which also included Wilson's Enterprise and Willie Webb's Voyager. In 1990, the machine made its debut at Stanford Midland Fair, standing on one of the Armstrong positions in Gooch's Court near Bath Rhine. Local resident Frank Cook captures the build up, opening, and pull down to detail. Search for Stanford Mid Length Fair 1990 on Frank's channel, split into three parts. The link is left in the description. In July 1990, breaking the long journey between Newcastle and Jersey, the wheel opened at Basingstoke Carnival and Alder Shop with John Wall. By then, William had fitted a new trailer mounted pay box to the main chassis. From 1991, the diver is seen from Ron Taylor's photo towering over the Goose Fair sites occupying Plot 44. Forwarding to February 1992, the Skydiver was one of the UK's many novelty rides at the inaugural Leeds Valentine's Fair, held in the city centre, standing at the junction of Cookridge Street with the Hedgerow. The video extract was taken by specialist from the fair video creator Dave Homer. A link to Dave's website, Dave Homer Video, is added in the description. Following Leeds was another brand new fair at Meadow Hall Shopping Centre in Sheffield, organised by Bob Wilson and Sons. William Summers opened up a few more of Wilson's fairs in 1992, including Durham Downs Bristol for Easter, Perry Bar, Mary Hill Shopping Centre near Dudley, Meadow Hall again for the summer, and Birmingham Onion Fair in September, which was revived by Wilson's. 
1992 saw Bridgewater and Nottingham Fairs overlap dates. William opted to give Gooseware a miss and instead made a first appearance at Bridgewater on Willie Webb's position. Followed by a return to Hull Fair which is shown on this video. The next clip from 1993 shows the skydiver open at Nutsford for the Royal May Day Festival. It was to make further appearances in the North West that year, including the Royal Show at New Brighton and St Helens Show. After Nutsford, the ride occupied one of four new floating positions at Hereford Mayfair along St Owen Street. Later in 1993, the machine would venture into South Wales, appearing at the inaugural Cardiff Big Weekend Fair in August and Neath Great Fair in September. The machine returned to Nottingham in 1993, occupying its usual floating position. Then to Hull for the second week, as seen from the video release Night Fever by Dave Homer. After Hull, the diver occupied one of the floating positions at Salisbury Fair for its first appearance in Wiltshire and finished the year returning to Scotland for the new Edinburgh Hogmanay Fair organised by Matty and Douglas Taylor. In 1994, the skydiver was damaged during the Good Friday storm on Durdham's Downs, Bristol. Some feared it may never appear again. However, during my first visit to Newcastle Hoppings 1995, I found the machine back gracing the skylines again, following repair work by ARM. However, there was a future change in direction, with George Wharton travelling the machine for William. I saw the machine again at Cardiff, just before opening at Plymouth Hoe and Payton and Torquay Regattas for the first time. In September, the machine made return appearances at Stokesley Show, Scarborough Fair and Nottingham, all after a year's absence. My photo shows its return to its usual position at the Goose Fair. Back to Hull afterwards for the second week, occupying its usual position as seen in Dave Homer's video. The following month, it made further appearances in the Lancashire area for the bonfire period. In 1996, the machine was officially in George Wharton's ownership, spending the spring and early part of summer travelling the northwest, along with opening at Hereford as seen here. We caught up with George and son Reese at Cardiff Big Weekend, where the diver occupied a prominent position by the City Hall. From there, they headed southwest again for painting and Torquay. They opted to stay in the West Country for the back end run as opposed to the normal big affairs.
The wheel is seen here on a first visit to Swindon in mid-September at the Link Centre. This was a fare that lessee Stephen Hill started two years before and has been successful for him ever since. The Watson family opened the diver for the sunny Easter weekend of 1997 at Hampton Court on the southwestern outskirts of London. Winter work was clearly visible as the 16 gondolas were sparkling in the sunshine with a fresh silver and navy finish. The fair was the most impressive scene there, with Cadona and Milne's giant wheel on UK debut, allowing this stunning aerial photo published on the front page of the World's Fair newspaper. The diver itself appeared on the front page of the same paper just weeks later, making its debut in Leicester at Victoria Park, appearing at a few more places with Billy Bates the same year. The summer months saw the machine return to Cardiff B weekend and the Devon Regatta run. In the autumn, the diver made return appearances at Bridgewater and Nottingham, on this occasion at the Goose Fair, occupying a central position, Plot 23, where Wilson Zipper more famously stood in the 1980s. Along with the two giant wheels, which were touring the UK at the time, they created a skyline which was never to be repeated again in the 20th century. In 1998, the Waltons had established a steady run of places, from Hampton Court for Easter through to the summer run in Devon, seen here on paint and green for the final night. In late September, the ride returned to Bridgewater Fair for a second year. Owing to the clash with Nottingham, I went to Bridgewater the opening day to experience a very muddy ground following wet weather the previous week. Yours truly experienced the machine for himself with enthusiast Richard Bambrook, something we often talk about these days. These photos were taken by the late Graham Payne, of which his son Rob very kindly passed to me many years ago. From Bridgewater, the ride was a new landmark for Midland Mops and Michaelmas Fairs, opening at, amongst others, Abingdon, Stratford and Banbury. The video clip seen here is from Abingdon Ock Fair, where it stood near to Stephen Hill's Top Gun Skymaster. In 1999, I took this stunning night photo of the wheel at Hampton Court, illuminating the skyline. They opted to stay in the London area to travel with Irving Leisure. On 10th of May, it was at Beaconsfield Fair for the first time in their ownership, following on the next month a first visit to Cambridge Midsummer Fair, standing opposite the famous Golden Row. The summer and autumn, it appeared at many of the grounds it did the previous year, including Cardiff Big Weekend during a hot spell of weather seen here by John Horseman. For the back-end run, it made return appearances at the Midland Mops, with Tewkesbury and Warwick included. For the millennial celebrations welcoming them in 2000, the Whartons took the wheel across the ferry to Paris to form a festival wheels along the Champs-Élysées. It was just built up for exhibitional purposes with the cars not required. While searching Google recently for photographs of the event, I found this Getty image, which undoubtedly was their ride. Prior to the 2000 season, George and Reese went about transforming the machine to a new theme. We arrived at Hampton Court on Good Friday to find a skydiver this time standing at the palace end of the ground next to James Horton's gallopers, sporting its new theme as the Vortex Big Wheel. Apart from its now customary Hereford appearance, the ride stayed in the London area for the following few weeks. We did find the machine open at New Addington at the end of May before returning to Cambridge for a second year 
This image I used in my last episode shows the wheel dominating the skyline in the background. The end of July it appeared at the very first Big Cheese Festival in Caerphilly, followed by Cardiff, Paynton and Torquay. Seen at Paynton Regatta by John Horseman, I visited Torquay Fair myself that year. While I was staying in Devon, I was informed by George and Rhys that they were going back to Hull Fair. Its first appearance since 1995 was in the Corton Street Club car park, standing alongside another ride built by Chance Rides, Stuart Miller's Toboggan Coaster, which gate made its debut the year before. I didn't take a photo of the machine in the background personally. However, John Horseman again delivers. Come spring 2001, the fairground community was suffering the effects of the foot and mouth crisis with a number of grass fairs being cancelled that year. Also, it was no longer the tallest machine at every fair, with giant wheels, reverse bungees, drop towers, and in this particular year, booster rides appearing on the circuit. The diver was advertised for sale in the World's Fair, and didn't leave the yard until Hereford in May. It was not seen anywhere until the summer. After four consecutive years opening Museum Avenue for Cardiff Bee Weekend, the wheel was back on the floating position near to the City Hall but overshadowed by the towering structure of James Miller's Amusement's Big Ben Tower. I also captured at Cardiff the Foden six-wheeler which hauled the main load from place to place. The cars are packed into a second load which was parked elsewhere. That's Hull Fair 2001. The Vortex Wheel was in the main part of the fair. It was the highest ride of the fair many times. However, surrounding it were two lofty machines built by Fabri of Italy. Alongside stood Adam Alderman's Mega Drop Tower from Holland, while behind was Matty and Douglas Taylor's Bomber, the fair's first booster ride. It would be the last time I would saw the machine open. Following a further appearance at Hereford in 2002, the Wharton family replaced it with the Sun Wheel, an Italian 80 foot high conventional Ferris wheel imported from France. The Skydiver was eventually sold to Billy Joe Butlin for opening at the site of the former Seaburn Amusement Park near Sunderland. Its stay was short-lived, as seen here by local enthusiast Ian Davis, which appeared on Facebook. Since then, it has not seen the light again and remains in storage, with the owner's business out focused elsewhere. Whether the ride appears again or not remains to be seen but for now it's regarded as one of the great novelty rides of UK fairground history. We hope you enjoyed this video about the UK's one and only Chance Ride Skydiver, which over the years provided a temporary beacon for events and enjoyed by thousands all over the nation, attracting many fans. Episode 5 is to be confirmed yet, but we will let you know nearer time what machine will be the topic. Stay tuned for the next edition of Rides from the Past. Tough one, nice one, get sorted.